Okay, so this week we are going to be talking about observational drawing, which is a specific drawing technique where you have the object that you're drawing in front of you, and you're looking very closely and carefully at it. Um, it's not coming from your imagination, you're not referencing it from a photo, it's something that is really close to you and you're actually looking really closely at it. This is a particular way of drawing, that's not to say that, you know, imagining things isn't an important way of being creative and being an artist, but this particular skill set of drawing observationally is really important for you guys to learn and master, and it ties in with the right brain, left brain stuff that we were talking about last week. So, tapping into your right brain is an observational skill. And the nice thing about this with the blind contour drawings that you did, thinking about and observing negative spaces and uh, that stuff, it's going to help you with your observational drawing skills as well. So we'll talk about some of that in just a second. But when you're looking at an object, there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. The first one, and these are all on the assignment notes as well, the first one is to start with light sketchy marks. So most of us are used to holding our pencils in a very specific way. So you hold it relatively close to where the lead is like this and you use it to write words on a sheet of paper. So to write words that can be read well, you tend to press down pretty hard and intently on the top of your pencil. As an artist, you need to vary up the way that you are making marks with your pencil and so one of the things I want you to play with is holding your pencil back a little bit further. So if any of you guys are baseball or softball players, you may have heard your coach tell you to like choke up on the bat. We are trying to loosen it up a little bit. So when you start to plan stuff out, you always want to start with light, soft, sketchy marks. No one expects you to get the marks right the very first time that you're doing something. When I'm drawing, I'll do like maybe 40 or 50 different really soft light marks. And then when I find the mark or the shape that works best for the object that I'm drawing, then I'll change back and I'll press down on my pencil just a little bit harder. But I'll build up a whole bunch of different really soft lines to begin with, and then I'll move on from there. So play up while you're working on your drawings, play up with how you're holding your pencil. You'll see that this kind of mark has a lot looser and a little bit more freeing. Um, you might play around with your pencils just a little bit um, before you get started on this week's assignments. One thing that we take for granted with the whole right brain left brain dichotomy is when you're drawing something you have a tendency not to actually look at it and the key to observational drawing is to look at your object. You're trying to look at what it is you're drawing. So if we were in the classroom together, one of the things I do is I scan around the classroom and I see whose eyes are looking at their objects. So especially for like interesting objects, complicated art. This is my little like hand model. The pinky finger broke off a while ago. Um, but something complicated like this, my left brain knows, oh, I have a symbol for what this is. I know what a hand looks like. I've got this. But remember, we learned last week that your left brain is terrible, terrible, terrible at drawing. Your right brain is awesome at it. Let your right brain do the work, and you're going to allow your right brain to do that work by actually looking at what you're drawing. So if I were going to be drawing this hand, I would be looking at it intently, and I would, you know, take a look and maybe go back to my paper, sketch a few marks, double check them, double check the negative spaces as I'm drawing with my paper, but you're looking at, at your object twice as much as you're looking at your paper. So you have a couple of timed assignments this week. Um, for example, for your five minute drawings, you should be looking at this, whatever it, well, you don't have this in front of you, um, but whatever object you're drawing, you should be looking at that for, you know, three to three and a half minutes for your five minute drawing. Draw large. I've been teaching long enough that I think I've come to like the crux of why students don't like to draw large in their work. And that is, if I draw it small enough, no one will see if I've made any mistakes. 
So sometimes students give me these teeny, teeny, tiny little minuscule, no, you're practicing your drawing skills. You need to draw large. And honestly, fixing your mistakes when your drawing is bigger is so much easier. If you're building up with your soft, sketchy marks, erasing is no big deal. And it's honestly, it's okay if those marks are still there when you're working on a sketch. It's not that big of a deal. Don't make assumptions about things. Actually observe what it is that you're drawing. Some of the objects that I'm going to suggest for this week's drawings, um, we traced some scissors last week too, but things like scissors, clothespins, stuff like that, stuff that you've seen a thousand times, your left brain is going to want to be like, oh, I got this. I got this. I know what this looks like. Don't make assumptions about what you're drawing. Actually look at it. Um, and then move on to the next one. How do the different parts relate to each other? So what I mean by that is, if I were to look at my fancy pants scissors, these were a gift, um, I would think about how the different parts of the scissors relate to each other. How wide is this part in comparison to how long it is? How much longer are the blades compared to the red part of the handles. And I will check and double check, is the inside as wide as the inside here? How big is this circle in the middle compared to the whole width of the object? And asking yourself these questions as you're working through your drawing is going to help you from making any mistakes. So if you're constantly asking yourself in your head, how does this part relate to this part? How does this part relate to that part? Um, you're going to get it correct the first time, and you're going to not make the assumptions. A final thing, if you happen to have time, if you don't get to this step for your shorter uh, five-minute drawings, don't worry about it. But start to think about what the texture looks like. So what does the surface look like? If I were to draw this hand, for example, my pinky was hand, it's made out of wood, and I know that it's not probably showing up super great for you guys, but there's a wood grain texture on it. So even though the hand itself is smooth, I can see the marks of the wood grain texture. And if you have enough time, that's another great thing that you can add um, to make your object look more complete. We will talk later about how to shade objects to make them look three-dimensional. We will talk later about how to add shadows and highlights to make objects look like they have form. So don't worry about that this week. We're mostly concentrating on how objects relate to each other and practicing the skill of looking closely. So your first drawings are five-minute drawings. And like I suggest in the assignment notes, pick like little things. They don't have to be anything complicated. Keys work really well because they have interesting negative spaces. Things like clothespins work really well. Seashells always have interesting texture. If you have screws laying around the house, like, you know, you can screw into a wall. What's interesting about those is we make assumptions about those all the time when we're looking and drawing them because We've seen them so many times. So one thing I recommend is counting, which I know is technically, you know, a left brain skill, like numerical stuff. But when you know for certain how many segments your seashell has, when you know for certain how many twists you can see in a screw, then you know how much you're supposed to be drawing. So like I've got this little guy that I got from the Pacific Science Center. So I would count, for example, how many folds are on his collar. I can only see three, so that's all that I would draw. I see a lot of times students will, you know, get a little bit crazy pants. Maybe they're drawing a seashell or a screw or something, and they just have a whole bunch of lines. I'm like, that screw only twists around three times. What are you doing? They're like, oh, I didn't count. I wasn't paying attention, right? Don't make assumptions. You're trying to look closely at objects. For your two 15-minute drawings, so your five minute drawings, you're only going to be drawing one object at a time. Just pick one thing, set a timer for five minutes, practice drawing, working on all of these things. And then your two 15 minute drawings, you're going to be creating clusters of objects. They can technically be the same thing for both of your drawings if you want to. I would just look at them from different angles. But what I recommend is your three objects 
And let's say that I had these guys. Oh no, I'm gonna have to tilt this. I'll pause. Okay, quick cut. So, when you're doing your larger 15 minute drawings, you're gonna be selecting three objects that you're gonna put together in a cluster. What I recommend is you select objects that you can create interesting negative space with. So that's why I picked this one. The negative space, remember from last week, is the space around and in between. So you can create interesting negative space with this. I suggest that you have your objects touch each other so you're not trying to like draw stuff in a row like this. You want them to be clustered together. And these are like little tongs from my daughter's play ice cream set. So that would be an interesting observational drawing. And you want to make sure that you use three objects. You can do five if you want to. It's a little bit more advanced and obviously I'm not going to require it. Um, but you always want to stick with an odd number of objects because our brains tend to group together and pair things together. So your viewer will be more interested in your drawing if you are seeing things that don't pair together super easily. So it's always best to work with an odd number of objects. The important thing about your 15 minute drawings is, you know, other than you're actually setting a timer for 15 minutes. And if you think I can't tell, you're crazy. I know when you've spent 15 minutes on a drawing. Um, you need to give yourself some feedback. You are going to give yourself some constructive criticism about how you think your drawing went and maybe think back about how it relates to all of our observational drawing stuff. So maybe your first 15 minute drawing, you're like, oh man, I really drew this way too small. Cool. Write yourself some feedback, either on a post-it note or on the back of your drawing, but that feedback is part of your grade for this week too. So make sure that when you're photographing your work and uploading it into Teams, that you're including that feedback piece as well. Um, maybe you did a really good job of soft sketchy lines, but you went so soft that you couldn't really see what you were doing after a little while. Just give yourself some feedback about how to improve on your observational drawing skills. Now, you're required three five minute drawings and then two 15 minute drawings. If you want to do more, you can practice makes better, obviously, um, and purposeful practice makes better, obviously. Um, so think about that as you're planning out your time for the week. Um, we will be doing more and larger uh, still life and observational drawings in a couple of weeks. I'm just going to give you guys a few more tools about building up your skill set with different shading techniques and um, how to make objects look three-dimensional with highlights and shadows. So We'll be working on that and then we'll be coming back to observational drawing. So there's no harm in practicing it, just a little bit extra. All right, that's all I've got for you guys for this week. Observational drawings. Sweet. Good luck.